Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. How's everyone doing? I pray all is well. Um, welcome to Purposely Design. This is Angela and I'm here with the with another word. Um, I would say just this is more so insight I'm going to say this is more so insight because I don't know um, the Lord started dealing with me today on devouring one another and I guess he's pretty much trying to um, teach me in my walk and through things either I've seen or things that I'm experiencing or things that, you know, I need God to deal with me more on and help me more on. And he's just enlightening me to some things. And so um, today I want to talk about this because, you know, this is one of those things that I don't think we really think about, you know what I mean? And but we need it's like he wants us to focus and totally walk in love like and when you walk in love you're not going to tear each other down but you're going to build one another up and um i'm telling you like he's been exposing the enemy his devices just as I was talking about on the last podcast you know he's been pointing out some things uh, that are going on around me but also things that are going on with me you know in me and so I know that that's why he said pray ye one for one another we're supposed to be praying for each other because of the fact that the enemy is he slick with his devices you know what I'm saying and we have to be we can't be ignorant and we have to acknowledge what these things are you know what I'm saying and let fa- the father you know show it to you you know be willing to see and take heed to it you know what I mean even when he's exposing you you're still supposed to take heed but anyways let's go on into prayer father God we thank you for this word we just ask right now that you will help us Lord God in our walk in our daily walk with you father help us to continue to um, take your hand that stretch towards us father and literally walk with you in you You know, um, let your feet, Father, be our feet and your hands, our hands. Lord God, help us to do the work and to do the will that you have sent us out to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, open up every eye to see, every ear to hear, and every heart to be receptive. Lord God, prick our hearts, Lord. You know, work on our heart, oh God. Don't allow our heart to be to get cold due to the things of this world, due to the things that are going on around us, things that are, you know, going on even inside of us of the flesh worn against our spirit. Father, Lord God, send peace, oh God, to every spirit, every soul, Lord God, every thought, every imagination Everything that would exalt itself against your knowledge, Father, send your peace even now, Lord God. Help us to submit willfully and fully to your ways and to your will, Lord. Help us not go astray and go our own way and go, um, you know, to go along and go with those imaginations and those thoughts, God, but. Help us, God, to be submissive to the mind of Christ. Be submissive to your will and to your ways. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all praise and all glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank God and amen. Amen and amen. Mm. So let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So here, you know, Paul is telling us, look, you know, stand in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free and don't be entangled again with that yoke of bondage and so there's a bondage there's some yokes of bondage that that the Lord had delivered you from and if you get back into those mindsets if you get back into those ways you can get back entangled you know if we don't start to take those imaginations and take those thoughts and take, you know, that stuff and take it before the Lord and ask God to help us and help us to see, Lord, who is this? Like, where is this coming from? Where did that thought come from? Where did that imagination come from? Some of it can be a seed. And that's what I'm learning as well. Some of it can be a seed. And some of it is, uh, you know, a seed that the enemy planted. Some is a seed that you might have received through TV, through the television, through uh, listening or watching um uh, you know, you can even be watching another minister. You can even be um, on the on the internet. You know, on um, YouTube or whatnot. You can be. Um, there's just different places. Like you can pick this thing up on. You can be talking to somebody literally on the phone, and because of the conversation. That conversation, then I planted a seed. And if you don't watch it, it can grow. And, uh, you know, the word literally talks about this. And a matter of fact, gives it a name. And so... That's, you know, we are in in Galatians chapter five right now. But, you know, um, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about as far as this name is in Proverbs six and 19. And it says a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among the brethren. So there's people who, you know, are spreading lies and discord amongst the brethren. So what is discord? Let's see. Discord. It's a disagreement between people. The lack of harmony between notes sounding together. In music. It can be 
in the Webster Dictionary, um, a lack of an agreement or harmony as between persons, things, or ideas. Active quarreling or conflict resulting from discord among persons or factions. A harsh or unpleasant sound. Discord. And so people can tend to spread this discord amongst, you know, inside of the church, amongst one another. Um, and I believe even when it comes down to um, people, just people, period, like um, it can be a thought that you could think towards a person because of what you know about them or what they've done to somebody close to you. So you paint this picture in your mind and you created your own discord and then take it and spread it amongst people, you know. And so we got to be careful for nothing because the enemy wants to entangle us into a yoke of bondage. Whereas Christ had came to set us free from it and spreading this cord, you know, um, it's, it's not helpful. It's going to bring you back into a captive, a captivated state. You know what I'm saying? And but Christ came to set you free from that. So it says back to Galatians chapter five, it says, Behold, I Paul say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you justified by the law. So he's letting you know, you know, if you consider this to be justified because of the fact that you got circumcised, you're wrong. Matter of fact, you have fallen from grace. You can't be justified by the law because of that. As a matter of fact, you are now a debtor to do all the law. He said, Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we thought for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So we have to wait. See, I mean, like circumcision is a, a form of a physical thing, a, a fleshly thing. OK, um, signifying your um, cleanliness, your. Um, yeah, your cleanliness, basically you being cleansed. Um, but here it is. For we, through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So he's tell, he's saying basically like the circumcision didn't help you. Especially if you're depending on that to get you into heaven. Instead, it calls you to be a debtor. And it calls you to be a debtor to the whole law. But if you through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith is where you you ought to be. That's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be waiting for the hope of righteousness by faith through the Holy Spirit. It says in 6, 4, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. 
what really availeth is faith that's worked by love. Not bondage. Not that yoke. That heavy burden that you put on people that have been placed upon you and has been placed on gener- from generation to generation. But we talking liberty here. We're talking faith which worketh by love here. We're talking Holy Spirit helping you, giving you the hope of righteousness by faith which worketh by love. Seven says, ye did run well. Who did enter you that ye should not obey the truth? Wait a minute. You was doing just fine. What happened here? What caused you to disobey or to turn away from the truth? It says in eight, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Know that Christ didn't do that to you. And he didn't, cause you, he didn't cause you to go that route. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And see, this is what I'm talking about here. Just a little bit. It's just that little seed, a little thought, a little temptation, a little bit. Just it don't make it don't take much. Just like that seed that he's he showed you that that of of a mustard seed. A measure of faith of uh, uh, in the grain of a mustard seed. Same ta- same thing when it comes down to um, discord. Same thing when it comes down to spreading lies. Same thing when it comes down to um, basically anything negative. It just you get some some of us are downloaded with negativity. From our jobs, from people, from the things that's going on around us, from things that are even possibly going on in your life. Right now, at this moment, you may be going through a lot of negativity. And eventually, that negativity will begin to work on your conscience, on your mind. You know, the way you think, the way that you feel, your emotions. You know what I mean? And some people break down, cry, get upset. Some people take it and lash out at other folks. Everybody does deals with it so differently. Nobody deals with it the same. But in the meantime, just note that that little bit, it could be just a a simple conversation from one person to the next. And through that conversation, that seed had been planted. Now, you know, you got somebody thinking some type of way about another person because of a conversation. So what I'm learning is I have to watch my conversation. I have to watch my mouth because, you know, the enemy can be using my mouth to plant seeds of discord amongst the brethren amongst the people you know it may be that you know that person could have given me a very negative image of themselves even but not knowing the full story or the fullness of why I'm seeing what I'm seeing could cause me to react and 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 assume and see them in a whole nother a whole negative way you know what I mean and so but I know even though I know the word also tells us to be careful for nothing and so I've been speaking about being careful for nothing but I'm realizing that sometimes our words like the things that we're saying that the thoughts that come into our mind just all these things are like it's it's not that 
for you to so much quote unquote control but it's for you to see it and cast it down every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God against the knowledge of Christ you know we supposed to cast those thoughts down so that we can continue on our journey and not get stuck there cast it down and so anyways that little bit he said a living little leaveneth the whole lump so that just that little bit of darkness just a little bit of negativity a little bit of discord a little bit of a lie a little bit of if anything that's not godly will can can place that seed in you and it could grow just like faith can grow like that mustard seed of faith can grow so can that mustard seed of discord so can that mustard seed of lies you know and and some lies you told to your own self you know i'm saying however you know and 10 says i have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his his judgment whosoever he be. So he said, I got confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded, but that you will that he will um but that he that troubled you will bear his own judgment so this thing is going to fall back on them whosoever they may be it don't matter who they are um 11 says and i brethren if i yet preach circumcision why do i yet suffer persecution then is the cross, I mean, is the offense of the cross ceased. I would that they were even cut off with trouble you. I wish they would just get away from y'all. You know, I just wish they would just be cut off. For brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Look, don't let people cause you to err or cause you to get captive back into that bondage whatever it may be however whatever and however you know only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another and so he's like don't let that thing that liberty that God has given you cause you to err in your flesh it says only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh so to 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 do stuff you ain't got no business doing it says but by love serve one another instead serve each other by love not by ill intents you know not uh, according to your flesh but through the love of Christ for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love, shalt love thy neighbor as thyself but if ye bite and devour one another this is the, the verse that really stood out to me but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consume one of another it can happen you look up families get tore up this way they get into a big old argument over discord over something that had been planted instead of being rebuked we instead of planning things we need to rebuke some things you know what i mean um rebuke those thoughts of negativity that come to your mind rebuke um, every seed that 
you know, is of discord, you know what I'm saying? Rebuke those things. And so he said, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Before you know it, you know, you got this person there lashing out at one person and then you got somebody, then you all of a sudden you go for one lashing to a whole group devouring each other. Then you got, um, now all of a sudden people are fighting to a place where now they're killing one another. They go from fighting, from arguing to fighting to killing is what I see you going to different levels and and sometimes and you can even do this um, I believe you can even do this when it comes down to um, the spirit you know you can do this um, devour each other consume killing each other in the spirit like let basically your words because of the fact that we learned that your words are spirits and the things that we say can hurt to the place where it'll kill it'll cause that person not to be able to grow it'll stunt their growth or it'll just flat out kill them in the spirit knock them off to to the place where now they they just they don't want to hear nothing about the lord they don't even want to follow him anymore you know because of what had been said what had been done you know you got one person uh you know it's a lot of nitpicking and we got to be careful with the nitpick got to be careful with the negative words that come out of our mouth against other people got to be careful. And so that's what I'm, I'm seeing like, oh man, you know, or even, um, just about stuff, period, you know, and some people, what you may say as an observation may take it in a negative manner. You may not have meant it in a negative way. But they may take it negatively. You see what I'm saying? And so everything is like, you know, um, how is it that, how am I presenting this thing? You know, what am I saying? And how will I go about it from here? I think that's the most important thing. Now that I acknowledge this, now that I see this, now that God, you have given me insight, teach me how to go about it in a positive way and not um, say the things that would cause this controversy you know what I'm saying this uh discord this um this negative vibe type of thing you know what I mean it's like even when it comes down to um it's just I'm just seeing repetitive stuff um just like you asking for something and Causing a person to begrudgingly do things for you. Like they don't really want to do it. But because you asked them to. Um, it'll cause that person to begrudgingly do that for you. You know. And so. It's just. It's like all this. Or you may be begrudgingly doing things for people and expecting them to do it back to you. You see what I'm saying? Or to, 
give back to you or to do something in particular. It's like you can't do things and expect them to do it or to give back. You just it's like you can't you you got to watch you know the way you go about things and it's like a a these it's it's so much it's so much with the spiritual thing and um he was telling me on that Leviathan spirit and just so much um that will cause you to you know even be consumed like overwhelmed with so much it says this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh now this portion I'm going to talk about um, my friend and I we was talking about this uh, walking in the spirit and I was stating that um uh, I be, like we were talking about people who arrive, but in their mind, they feel like they have arrived. And there are people that feel that way in the flesh. That they have fully arrived in the flesh, although you, I believe spiritually you can arrive in the flesh. That's how I put it. I'll put it like that, because um that way it kind of like lets you know it's not by you but it's by the Holy Spirit by you know Christ in you walking uh, through you you know what I'm saying and and your hands are his hands and your feet are his feet you know what I'm saying and he is you he is your covering he is causing you to fully walk in him versus Walking fully in your flesh is what I'm saying. Um, and so this is kind of like that, you know, this is this. I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if we're fully walking in him, breathing, living in him fully all day, every day, night and day, you know, what I'm saying not just every now and again, not just. Every so often, not just here and there fully. I'm talking fully here, um, which I know is it, it can be accomplished. We just have to fully submit to get this fullness. Um, now, this is what what I know is that, you know, is going on, going on through me, going on. You know, possibly in others, and that is seventeen. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So here it is. You're trying to figure out, Lord, how can I get this my mind to be fully submitted unto you? How can I get my thoughts and my imaginations to be fully submitted unto you and your will and, you know, your way and just how, you know, and one, I learned, I'm learning uh, something that my friend sent me. She said it basically was. Um, a prophet love you talking about not talking so much in this hour and I see that when you talk and you begin to talk a lot and you get to talking about the things that's going on things that's going on in your life things that's going on period um, it can come off in a negative manner and because whatever might be going on may not be positive in your life and so you may just be speaking the truth but it may be taken negatively because you're not coming with um especially when somebody asks you they when people ask you how you how you doing what's going on 
with you, um, they don't always, they're not asking you that to receive any type of certain type of information. But at the same time, if that's what's on your mind, a lot of times we speak about it. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't want to hear it. That's all I'm saying. Like, at the end of the day, they don't want to hear that stuff. And, but this is what's going on. Your flesh, the things that's going on around you, you know, the stuff that's hindering your spirit, your, you know, physical being is worn against the things of the spirit. And so here God is trying to teach you and trying to get you to conform and be trans, not be, not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and your mind is fighting against the spirit and the spirit your mind is fighting against the things that you want versus the things that God wants for you it's fighting against um, these obstacles and a lot of times you don't know why it may seem like man I'm going through something it's, I feel like I'm in a battle and a warfare I'm fighting here and I'm fighting there and it seems like on every corner on, and on every hand is a fight going on but the fight really ain't going on so much on the outside as much as it's going on in the inside that is like a transformation when God is transforming you, transforming your mind, transforming your emotions, you can be so bottled up with everything, you know, and, and it gets to a place where when people come and they speak about some things that's going on with them and, and them things are negative. Now it's starting to impact you even more so because you already got all this stuff that's already on you. And then you got all this stuff from the other people. Um, This is once again being entangled with that yoke of bondage. These things that have are, you know, holding you captive, causing you not to grow because you're being consumed with these things that are negative. The things of the world. You're, you know, instead of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, 18 says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. So these things won't even hinder you as much if you would just become a begin to begin to be led fully by the Holy Spirit. Like, you need the spirit to full you need to fully be led we need to get in fully in the body of Christ and man it's like okay Lord help us to fully surrender help us to get fully in your will your way your body let your hands be my hands let your feet be my feet help me to walk in you fully live in me and breathe in me and walk through me I need you I need your total I need you to totally take over Angela in the mighty name of Jesus you know cause man our minds you know be in a battlefield and you you be trying to figure out like why am I you I mean a lot of times you catch it like something is off here what's up with this like why am I going through this it feels like emotional warfare or this type of warfare like what is really going on and sometimes it's just being consumed by so much going on around you inside you you know things that 
It's being spoken against you. Um, so much that may be going on in order for you to feel the way that you're feeling is what I'm saying. And, and you know, at the end of the day, we just can't be consumed with the things of this world. But we must be transformed. And, you know, but we were talking about people mentally and physically who believe that they fully arrived. And I'm like, I don't know that you can possibly fully arrive per se. Like, I do believe that we are constantly learning. Just I'm like with her on that, because that matter of fact, this is something that I've been saying, like even uh I had an interview on TikTok and I was telling the people the same thing. Like, I don't believe like she asked me, you know, um, so when do you believe that you arrived? And I said, I haven't. No, I have not arrived fully. And she's, you know, oh, you know, the only I said, because I believe that you don't, that you're constantly the only way we can arrive is through Christ is what I'm saying. At the end of the day, the only way you can get to the fullness all the way is through him. Like I need to make sure my mind is the way his mind is. My thoughts, my imagination, my heart needs to be a flesh so that I can have that compassion, that love towards my brother. And if I ain't got that love towards them, then I have to look with the inside of me. Like, okay, Lord, I need you to do something with this heart. Let, uh, you know, I need you to live and breathe and move through me. You know, help me physically um, as well as mentally and emotionally to do the will that you have called me to do. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service this is what I'm saying like I need I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice and allowing him to cause me to be holy and acceptable unto God which is my reasonable service because I realize that my righteousness is as filthy rags. And the only way I can get to holiness is to fully depend on you. I can't do it myself. It said, and be not what I've been speaking the whole day, you know, this whole time primarily. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way that you can be fully transformed is by your mind consistently, constantly being renewed day by day. And I believe this is what God is doing now. Like Angela, no, no, that's not. Nope. Come here. Nope. Don't do that. Nope. Your mind got to get right. No, I need you to think like this. No, look at that. You know, pointing things out. Hey, uh, uh-uh, no, this is this ain't it. No, I need you to do it this way. I need you to um, see this. You know what I'm saying? Because the only way that you can change something is if you are aware of it, and then you need him to help you to change. You really do. Um, but anyways, it says. By the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that um, prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only way that you're going to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is by the renewing of your mind. So I said, Lord, I need the mind of Christ. I need the mind of Christ, Lord. I need the mind of Christ. Lord, help me to walk in you. Help me to walk in you. Give me the hands, Lord God. Call me to 
walk in to live and to breathe and to um, do the things that you would call me to do that you have called me to do Um, three says for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith and so that portion reminds me of the conversation of fully arriving you know you're not supposed to feel like I'm you know your mindset shouldn't be more uppity you know what I'm saying and like I have arrived I've gotten to where mental yeah you in your mind you really probably do believe that and nine times out of ten that's the enemy that and play tricks on your mind which is why we constantly have to be in a spirit of renewal for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another note that we are members one of another wherefore we ought not to be fighting we ought not to be devouring one another we ought not to be sowing seeds of discord and we definitely ought not to be spreading lies but we need to be in faith we need to be praying we need to be fasting we need to be asking God Lord God what would you have for me to do help me to do the will that you have called me to in the mighty name of Jesus like I said help me to do the will that you have called me to help me to be who you called me to be in 2023 that's you know my prayer that's what I'm standing on in this season the five I mean six says having then gifts the differing according to the grace that is given to us it says we got gifts that are different wherefore guess what your lifestyle won't be like my lifestyle and my lifestyle ain't gonna be like yours why because we have different gifts and just because in being that my gift is different as I stated prior you know I believe myself to be a disciple because that's who God called me to be you know he's stated I was his disciple even though you know it's already said that I'm evangelist he said this in 2012 um, and so I'm seeing this now in 2023 2022 you know what I mean and so anyway we got different gifts and we have to recognize that person's gift is this therefore they're going to live a little different I gave they might have that okay here we go rather prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith so with prophecy that person's office is going to be different and you got prophecy you got prophets and you got a prophetic anointing so God can just cause you to be able to do that to prophesy especially if you have a you know God have anointed you to be a disciple is different you know disciples all you got to do is is look at the disciples in the bible you'll recognize yeah that was different because you know they walk with jesus and he was constantly teaching them so during my walk with god i'm constantly being taught something different He's constantly opening up my eyes to see certain things. And I thank God because I believe right now he's opening them more wide. It 
it says in seven or ministry let us wait on our ministering so if god have called you to minister we need to wait till he places us into the ministry to minister or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity let it be simple just give he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with carefulness with cheerfulness let love be without dissimulation abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good So let's look up abhor. Regard with disgust and hatred. So abhor that which is evil. Look at it not welcomely, but like, ugh. Be kindly and affection, affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honoring, preferring one another. So we supposed to be kind. Is anybody kind? You know what I'm saying? To one another, affectionate. You know, loving, in honor, preferring even one another, not slowful in business. Lord, help me not to be slowful in my business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We need to be fervent in spirit and serving the Lord rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing instant in prayer we have to constantly be praying like I was stating consistently instantly praying rejoicing in hope giving God thanks that okay so here it is. I'm saying, Lord, I'm struggling. I want, I need you to take me to this other. I, I need to be walking fully in you. And so instead of me complaining about it, I ought to be praising God accordingly, rejoicing, thanking God, Lord God, I thank you, Father, that you are causing me to walk fully in you, in your will. The will that you have for me. I thank you God in 2023. I will walk fully. In covenant with you. You know fully. In your will. Your way. Everything that you have for me. I will receive in 2023. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Giving to the necessity of saints given to hospitality, you know, so making sure that everybody is good. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. So instead of talking about these people, cursing them, we ought to be blessing them. Thank you. You know why? Because you just keeping me on God's mind. He's going to, I know he about to do something big because you keep putting your mouth on me. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Okay, so when somebody gets received good news, be happy for them. Rejoice with them. Thank God. Yes, you got the, you got the job. What? Look at God. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, Lord, we thank you. Give God glory on a court on a court. You know, on um you know that that uh 
good news. You know what I'm saying? We need to be getting on one accord with the news that is good. You know what I'm saying? And um, praising God for it. And reap with them that weep. So we need to be crying with those who are in tears. Those that are going through suffering. We ought to be showing compassion. 16 says, be of the same mind one towards another. You should be thinking just as the same way I think about you. You ought to be thinking about me. And I see that it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't always think of you the way that you think of them. And so I need, even for me, that God will help me, you know, even when, you know, I'm not, I may think a certain way towards this person, but that person don't think of me like that. And I ought to be like, I need God to help me. To be okay with that. Like Lord. I understand. They don't think of me that way. So help me to be alright with that. And continue on moving forward. Or not thinking of me like. You know. This person had been this type of blessing. Versus. This person had been such a curse to me. You know. The enemy, I believe, can have you so blinded that you were thinking that this person is a a curse, but really they've been a blessing the whole time, is what I'm saying. Mind um, not high things. Don't think about things that are all, that are highly, are considered to be high, but can send to men of low estate. Consent, I mean, condense to men of low estate. Don't think of them um, like of God, of a God. Okay, but recognize that they're on the same level as you. Be not wise in your own concepts. So don't find yourself being wise in your own thoughts. Recompense to no man evil for evil. If somebody does something evil against you, don't go back and do something evil towards them. Like people tend to love to get revenge. Provide things honest in the slate. I mean, in the sight of all men. So give things honest in front of everybody. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Try to try to be peaceable with everybody. I know my dad, you know, Joe Collier, he he is a very good at um, trying to be peaceable with everybody. He's always been that type of person, like um, always been known to be a very mild, meek man. You know what I mean? And uh, even if you are a a disorderly person, he still tends to be this meek mouth man regardless. You know? And so he gets peace. You know what I'm saying? He don't have to worry about people because they tend to really like him due to the fact that he's peaceable with everybody. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Don't go trying to fight your own battles, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Don't take vengeance upon yourself. Give it to God to get the vengeance because vengeance belongs to him. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. So if your enemy come in and he hungry and he thirsty, 
you still supposed to give. You still supposed to provide the drink and the food so that he can eat and he can drink still, even though, you know, he's your enemy. For in doing first in so doing thou shalt reap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So instead of us going and doing things evil, you know, not rendering evil basically to evil, but still be good to those that are evil towards us. And so Lord help us to not render evil for evil. Don't allow us, Father, to get caught up in trying to uh, play this revenge role. But in everything, Lord God, help us to be submissive and allow you to um, bring forth your wrath. Meanwhile, help us to pray for that person. You know, help us to pray for them. Help us even to bless them anyway. Bless your word says to bless those that curse us. So help us, Father, to bless those that curse us. In the mighty name of Jesus and Father, we'll forever give you all praise and glory for it. I just thank you, Lord God, for opening up my eyes to see and my ears to hear and my heart to be receptive to your word and to your will for my life your way help us oh God every day to continue to journey in this journey like to continue walking God and talking and living and breathing through you help us to know that it's through you Lord God that all things is is, is through you Lord God you're the one. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. Help us, God, to know that we ought to and need to walk fully in covenant with you. Help us not to take things upon ourselves, but in all things, help us to continuously go before you, Father. And Father, we will forever give you all praise all glory and honor in Jesus name thank God and amen I pray that this word helped you and that it enlightened enlightened something on the inside of you that you'll be able to run and not walk to know the fullness as to what all God is saying in this hour So until next time, God bless you.